Hey everybody, hope you're all doing right out there. I am just about able to fit in the frame if I'm down here. Um, yes, it is time to do maintenance on the DRZ. If you don't know the history of this bike, I've had this bike for many years now and it's gone through many trials and tribulations. Uh, it lost its baby bore many years ago. I don't know if you know this, but all supermotos normally are born with a baby bore, like a milk bore. And then when it grows up, it gets an adult bore, which is normally about 10% bigger. Um, it got that a few years ago. And then, uh, well, let me think, was it two years ago now? I stripped this bike down to the frame, took the paint off of it, resprayed it myself in this garage, and rebuilt the whole thing back up to what it is two years ago. Since then, um, it's been used a lot, and it's shown that in places, and there are jobs to be done to get it through. Well, it would get through its MOT, no problem, but it's just because I like looking after my bikes, I normally do maintenance in the winter, and I don't mind stripping them right down to do that, which is a good thing, because that's what I'm doing to this bike. You see, I have two bikes. This 2007-2008 DRZ 400SM with a 440 kit in it, and it's been played with a bit, and I've also got an XJ6. Yamaha. Uh, that bike I thought was going to be the one that needs most of the work because it may need a new clutch. This I thought was going to be literally fluids, a couple of spots on the paint, bits and pieces, but then I remembered something I've been putting off for a couple of years. The rear swing arm, opposed to the front swing arm, on the swing arm when you lift it up it's got a tiny little knock which means one of the bushes or bearings in the back end is loose and that's allowing a little bit of free movement. Where it is now is the same as it's basically been for the like the last two, three years. It's not really got any worse, but I do have, one moment. I do have this kit that was left over from when uh, I was doing work with Wiimoto, which I may be doing again this year. Uh, and they gave me this whole bearing kit and I realized what's left in here, I believe is the swing arm bearings. Because there's bearings and shafts and it all looks right, but I'll have to double check all that. So the good news is I may already have the parts I need if it's the swing arm bearings. I have a feeling though that it could be the bushes or bearings in the top end or the bottom end of the shock. I don't think there's anything else in the linkage, but I'll, I'll have to wait. No, I think it might be on that L linkage. That's the point. I know I need to fix that, but I don't know where it is. So I'm going to have to take the back end of this bike off bit by bit to find out what the actual issues are. And that's what this video is about. This is episode one of my... I haven't got a name for it yet. What am I going to just call it? I'm going to be generic as hell for searchability because my channel needs all the help it can get. So I think I'm just going to call this Most Cycle Maintenance 2024 Episode 1. I know it's boring, but as I say, the, the genericness of that might be quite good. It's difficult to get my videos picked up. And while we're on the subject of videos getting picked up and things like that, if you'd like to support this channel and support this build, I really appreciate it. Uh, you can do that through Patreon. You can do it through uh, direct donations through PayPal. You can go and grab a T-shirt. You can buy a sticker. You can watch the videos and like them and share them around. That's really helpful. But this is going to cost money, and YouTube is paying absolute nothings at the moment because of the time of year so it would be really helpful if people can support me off of the platform that all being said let's begin the first job is going to be take the seat off take the plastics off uh, because that will get us well we won't damage them for one and two it gets us down to the bike a bit more then i'm going to have to take the rear wheel off and the point of this video is to find every job that we need to do that's what i was trying to say earlier on uh and try and find out which part in the rear linkage suspension and back end actually needs replacing. That's what I'd like to know today, ideally. Um, so list of jobs that I know absolutely do need doing are change the oil, change the oil filter, obviously, check the coolant out. I think it's relatively new, so I probably don't even need to flush it out or change it or anything like that, but we'll check it. Uh, the front end, on the front end of this bike, you have things called bleeders, which are basically little screws to allow you to relieve the air inside the chamber of the fork, allowing it to equalize to the barometric pressure that you're currently at. Um, I put my tubes on upside down. 
well, the wrong way around. So I can't actually access those screws. Uh, it was really stupid of me. So I have to crack off the yokes and spin the tubes at 180 degrees and then clamp them back up. And, and that'll be that. <laughs> check the brake pads, check the chain sprockets, which should be okay, and then saw out this back end. So it shouldn't be too bad at all, as long as the back end goes relatively okay. So there we go, we've begun. Uh, with a bit of editing magic, we'll have the bodywork off this in a jiffy. Oh, also, to be very clear, I'm not a qualified mechanic, and what you see in these videos is the way that I do things, and I'm not necessarily suggesting it's the way you do things, although it may be a good way of doing it, but I suggest that you look at multiple methods from other different people to make sure that my method is a, a useful, good, and safe, because I don't want to feature on Matt's videos again. Thank you. Mm, left in old seat. Do 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 do. Do. Ta da! One of the nice things about these sorts of bikes, they come apart in five minutes. If you are new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button, I really appreciate it. And do check out my other videos, I've got many, many years of making videos on YouTube, and uh, thousands of videos, I've probably got a video on anything you can imagine. Why is this not coming undone? Really tight! I'm just taking the chain gun off. Completely clean, I think it was just salt from the road, we've got so much salt I've been dumping, it's doing havoc. My rear caliper is very nasty looking, as you probably can't see. Get off the... There. Salted, actually. Now, obviously, when you take a bike apart, it's very important to label all the bolts so you know where they go. Um, you can have boxes with bags and labels. You could also uh, have like a piece of cardboard that you poke holes through and you write on what everything is. Point is, don't lose track of what your uh, bits are. Okay, I'm going to take the rear wheel off because I need to anyway, but it will help me diagnose where this problem is because I won't have the weight of the wheel to lift as well. So first thing, the skateboard wheel axle sliders come out, and if you don't know what these are, I learned this trick from Jake the Garden Snake. I have made a video on this, as has he. But rather than spending $100 or £100 on some axle sliders, you use cheap skateboard wheels and all thread and they work perfectly. What size are you? 24? 22. 24. B24. Is 24. Yeah. This is a great example of why you do maintenance and greasing. This has been caked in salt and dirt and mud and horribleness, and those threads are still perfectly clean with just a light smear of grease on them. Push it out. Come on, Derek, push it out. Oh no, forgot, I need to sort the caliper out to get that off. Hasn't been out since the bike went back together and just because I put that light coating of grease on it, no water or dirt's got in there in all that time. Ah, uh, chain guide. I forgot, the chain guide's also got to come off. Come on. Give me an angle. One chain guide removed. Now we can get the chain off. Now we can get every wheel. Thank you. Just looking at the sprockets. They're absolutely fine. Don't need to do anything to those, that's good. The rear disc is looking fine. 
What's our minimum? Four mil min. And they're just over four mil, which is within spec, but I'm, yeah, I'm happy with these for now. And they'll pass MOT. Now, hopefully, you'll be able to see this better now. That bit of play there. It's not in the suspension. It's not in the top end. I'm trying to remember the proper name of the part, but there is like an L-shaped link that goes to the bottom of the suspension. And it's that that's the bushing and it is just moving slightly. So I'm gonna remove the dog bones uh, and see if I can get down to remove that part without taking the swing arm off or undoing the suspension. Because it should be doable. <sighs> oh no, that's the paint. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And again, because these were greased, I was able to push that out with my thumb. Oh, past me, how I love you so much. Now the swing arm is free moving. I'd like that to be up and out of the way and I think I know how I can do that. Okay, so it turns out the swing arm bushes actually feel absolutely fine. It is this linkage one that's gonna be the problem. Uh, so let's undo that next. Oh yeah, it, there's no question about which one it is now. The amount of movement in that. Sweet Jesus. As a wise man once said, give me a lever long enough and I'll lift your mum. So now we have one more thing to undo, which is a really annoyingly hidden bolt. Uh, I don't want to, but I have to remove the brake switch because it gets in the way. Oh, thankfully it's just one bolt and it hangs out the way. So there we go. Now. Come on. Oh my God, stop falling out. I was really worried for a minute then because I couldn't find this sleeve. Okay, so the shock is here and there is a bushing in the top of this and that's got no movement in it. Uh, and the shock itself doesn't have like a, a knock in it anywhere. And the bottom end doesn't have a bushing in the shock, it's in the link over here. So this is the L-shaped linkage I was talking about, and I put it in the vise so I can check each bearing. That one, that's fine. That one, nothing. And then there's this one. Now this one does have quite a bit of play in it. And that could be it. But this feels more like it's because the bolt's too small than this moving uh, drill bit yeah it's the bearing and it's on this side that it's gone the bolt worst yeah so what I'm gonna do is the most logical thing which is replace that bearing see how much it is to replace all the bearings in here because if that one's gone maybe these are on their way out put the bike back together at least the swing arm and linkage and see if that movement goes away and if that's the case then we can crack on and this won't actually be too bad at all. I thought this was gonna add a lot of time. Oh God. But hopefully it won't. So there we go. We've reached the end of part one. I wanted to know the jobs I need to do to this bike and I now have the answer. 
because I thought of a couple more things. So the list is going to be this. Oil, filter, check the pads, although I think they're going to be absolutely fine. Replace the indicators because these are the cheap Amazon ones and they've lasted okay, but they're failing, I think. And I wouldn't mind having a matching set because I've got these click and rides on here still. And the click and rides are really cool indicators you can take out for when you go green laning. The problem is the whole system kind of doesn't last long and they tend to fall apart if they get vibrated or kicked, which the rear ones will uh, get vibrated more than the front ones. The front ones have lasted way longer than the rear and I've had been through several because I kept losing them off the back and eventually gave up and bought four indicators for the cost of one of the sockets of those. I was given those by RNG, I've done a review, a review video on them and they, they are a good product for what they are, but they seem to fail over time. So yes, indicators get the bearings in, replace those, at least that's going to be nice and easy because it's just a small uh, needle bearing. And then, yeah, give it a really good clean, look at the paint and it will be a nice easy one. So yeah, I'm really glad about that. So that's part one done. I need to speak to a wonderful company called Wemoto and maybe they'll work with me again um, to get some parts. It's a great deal. There's no like, you know, contract or anything like that. It's literally, can you give me these parts and I'll give you a shout out in the video and they're like, cool that's it super cool company seem to always have the parts i need and they last so yeah they gotta work me now right um so part two be more disassembly as in taking the tank off and then cleaning the bike a bit better because i'm filthy here I and mean, i know i was working on like you know grease and axles and stuff but the amount of sand in this i really want to clean this all out um so the next episode i guess will be stripping more of the bike and giving it a good old clean and then by episode three, hopefully, we'll have the parts come in. And it could be done within five or five episodes, maybe? Maybe? As I say, for this bike, if you're interested in a completely strip it to the ground, take the paint off and build it back up series, Restoration Z playlist, uh, it will be linked in the description below. We'll also go to my channel, it's supposed to turn channel, playlists, you'll see them all there, Restoration Z. And you can watch this bike go from a hole, rust hole, should we call it, down to a frame, repainted and back up to this two years ago before all of these problems. So yes, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here. If you'd like to help support this build and my channel, then please consider joining Patreon or support me in one of the other ways you can see in the description of this video. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, until the next one, bye-bye.